Greetings folks, here we have another action cam, or is it an action cam? It's the Xiaomi Mijia Mini 4K camera. A very high quality camera, I'd put it in the high quality class along with the Thi T5e, the Firefly 8S, the SJ Cam, SJ7 and the Foxy Legend 3. These are all uh, the cameras that I put in the high quality action cam class. They all have the Umbrella 12 processor, so does the Xiaomi Media. Uh, all of these cameras use the Sony uh, IMX117 sensor. This one uses the Sony IMX317 sensor. So it'll be interesting to see how that is different to all these other high quality action cams. I say it's a little bit different because all you get in the box is instruction manual, the camera and a micro USB cable. That's it. If you want any other accessories, you have to buy them yourself. You can buy an underwater housing and I have actually bought one of them. Uh, it's on the way so I can't just test it out at the moment. But uh, there we go. That's the camera itself. It is so simple. It has one button on the top. It has a big 2.4 inch touch screen and a little micro USB connector on the side with a little protecting door. Tripod screw mount on the bottom which I love and battery and micro SD card slot in the bottom there. has a big battery. The battery is 1450 milliamp hours giving you two hours recording time according to the specs. While we're at it, let's have a look at some of the specs. Two, uh, 4K resolution, that's true 4K, 30 frames a second. Two hour battery life, 2.4 inch touch screen, has a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capability, which I can't really test because my phone is too old, but uh, apparently it works very well. And umbrella CPU. Now one of the problems with all of these high quality uh, action cams, that well, the video is sensational and uh, the photos are super sharp and beautiful, but the audio quality is always a big letdown. Uh, I find it always a little bit delayed and very muddy and not good quality at all. It's a slightly larger form factor than the other cameras, which gives it the nice big screen. Uh, thickness and height are pretty much identical, but a lot wider. The lens is a good quality lens, 145 degree angle of view, so it's uh, not quite as wide as some of the other cameras. Love the big 2.4 inch touchscreen. Speaker and microphone on the top there and an in indicator LED, uh, on off button and shutter release. There's the little micro USB connection there and tripod mount and battery cover. So to turn it on, push and hold the shutter button. And we get a nice sort of minimal display of information on the screen. Swipe to the right and we can choose uh, all the different modes. Video, time lapse, slow motion, loop record, video plus photo, photo, timer, burst, time lapse, photo. Swipe back again to come back to the normal screen. We've got settings for each different mode down here. We can choose the resolutions from the beautiful 4K 30 frames a second, different qualities. You can reduce some of the fisheye lens distortion and that works very well. You can mute the mic, you can put the uh, time and date stamp on if you want, have it auto recording, change the metering mode, uh, I would have average usually. Exposure value, white balance, uh, and that's it for the 4K mode. Change to 1080 30 mode and go down. Then we get the addition of the image stabilization, which also works very well. I'll show you examples of that later on. 1080 60, and yes, we still have image stabilization. If you swipe to the other way, you get the files that are already on the card. You can review them very nicely. On the big wide screen, you can delete, transfer, all that sort of, that sort of stuff. If you swipe down, you can sort of get a, a quick access menu to settings, turning the Wi-Fi on. Uh, that's locking and turning off as well. Let's have a look at these settings. So these are the camera settings. Video standard, NTSC or PAL. Uh, shows you the SD card information. More choices. You can mute the beep if you want to. I might actually put the beep on. Brightness of the LCD, I might actually make that higher for 
better viewing outside. You can rotate it upside down, lock the screen. Auto power off. I don't like it turning off. Bluetooth pairing for a remote, I guess. Or Bluetooth connecting to your phone. I'm not too sure about that one. There's a user guide. You set up the date and time. Device info. Back to defaults. And uh, that's all very good. Uh, Time-lapse video. You have some good choices there. One second, 0.5 seconds, one seconds up to 60 seconds. They're great choices. Show you some time lapse in a little while. Determine what resolution you record in and lens distort and things like that. Slow motion, 720p and 200 frames a second is the slow motion setting. Loop recording, you can record in short segments if you want to. You can record video and photo at the same time and you can select the interval that the photos are taken that's all very nice in photo you have the choice of RAW or JPEG very good if you're going to do some editing now it's a 169 sensor I think because when you change to 4-3 aspect ratio you're just cropping off the sides self timer for selfie photos uh, there's the countdown there you can change that one Time-lapse photo, if you just want to take photos at regular intervals, uh, then you can choose the different times for that as well. So I find the screen very easy to use, and, and because it's nice and big, 2.4 inch, uh, it's very easy to see. I Even with the brightness turned down to medium, I could still operate it in the sunshine. It wasn't easy, but uh, it'll be better with it turned right up. All right, so it's time to go and have a look at some real-life examples, and uh, I think we'll be impressed with this. This is 1080-30. I'm just going for a bit of a walk around a little uh, stormwater lake. The water in this lake gets used to water the botanical gardens just over, over there. At least I think it does. But we get uh, water birds, we get uh, ducks, peahens, herons, ibises. Lots of water birds visit here. can't swim in this little lake. It's a wee bit dangerous for some reason.
1830 no human stabilisation. for my final sum up and I can confidently say this is my favorite action camera now it's the best quality action camera I've tried the video is super sharp the, the audio is excellent maybe a little bit of lag I'll have to experiment with that a little bit more the still photos are beautiful and you can do raw photos if you want to uh, in the video there's no compression artifacts in the sky they're those little sort of square blocks that you get sometimes the colours are really natural, there's no posterization, which is those sort of blocky banding you get in the sky sometimes. The tones are all very smooth and natural. Image stabilisation works very well on 1080. And Xiaomi are often uh, putting out new firmware updates as well to improve the function of the camera. Uh, I've just loaded on a recent one and that adds 2.5K 60 frames a second and 720 240 frames a second. So they're actively working all the time to improve the function of the camera. Negatives, I've got to pick a few negatives I suppose. Uh, the images, maybe they're a little bit over sharpened and a little bit too much noise reduction. I'd like to uh, drop them back a little bit myself if it was available in the menu, but seriously, it's a fantastic image quality. I noticed on the 1080 100 frames a second, the image quality dropped quite a lot. Um, so that's a setting that I probably wouldn't want to use. There were some odd thumping sounds in the audio every now and then. That may have been because I was touching the microphone with my hand or something like that, I'm not too sure. I kept changing it to average metering uh, and it seemed to want to revert back to centre metering whenever I turned it back on again. Hopefully that will be something that will be addressed in the firmware updates. And I guess you could say it's a negative not to have any accessories at all, but seriously I'd prefer to have a good quality camera and buy whatever accessories I need myself. Uh, I put the underwater housing, which was about 24 Australian dollars or something like that. And seriously, if you want lots of accessories, just buy a, a really, really cheap camera that comes with accessories and they're all going to fit the housing and you'll be right anyway. At the time of this review, this costs about 125 Australian, which is a ridiculously cheap price for a seriously good quality action camera. It's the Xiaomi Media Mini from Gearbest. Highly recommended. Thanks for watching.